couple weeks ago, I started on a mini series. Slide one, please. It called Foes to Our Spiritual Growth. And the title today is about complacency. You know, when we just take our acceptance into the family of the Lord for granted. Do I make it hard? Do I make it soft? Holy Spirit is leading God me in and be what it be, okay? Because my heart wants to connect to Him, to connect to you. I want this to be a driving force for you to sit back and think about what it is that I do for the Lord. How do I do it? I don't want to just serve God because everybody else is serving God. I don't want to just come to church on Sunday because that's the thing to do. I don't want to criticize people for going to church every Sunday and going to Bible study on Wednesday because I don't want to do it, so I criticize others to make them feel bad because they do it. We had a great Bible study on Wednesday. Minister Monte Torre. And, 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 and it's nothing to do. Oh, forgiveness. You know that thing that we, we, we harbor, the unforgiveness? And then we just get along and go, and, and we be hating on people, but we smile. But we're going to take the time to try to help ourselves to get rid of that baggage. We had about 50 people online. And I got 150 people to come to church on Sunday. What's up? We're missing something. So you can ask questions on Bible study. You can deal with some of those issues that you're facing that you don't want to talk about. You're among the brethren. And by listening sometimes to another brother or sister speaks, it, it, it gives you some energy, some know-how, what they went through and how they handled it. But when you close off and you want to do your own thing, you got to understand, man, you got to come and get everything that God has for you. You can't pick and choose when you want it. The times you miss is the times you need it. They help change the course of your life. You can come ten times and really don't get anything for what you're going through. And you say, ah, the eleventh time, I don't want to come in, and you miss what God has for you. Because it's about a heart thing. It's about a heart thing. About being connected, your spirit with his spirit, and you being one. And you understand everything that he wants you to understand to make your life. I say, and I'm going to say this, it makes it more miserable. <laughs> because you get attacked more. But actually, but you know more. And you be able to withstand the enemy fiery dots. So when you don't know anything, but you just know of, you get an attack and you don't even realize that you can deal with it. You know what I mean? Foes to our spiritual growth. And these are uh, 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 like temptation is what I started with. We all are tempted in some ways. One said, we all got some temptations. And then you would think of the song or in the group temptation. Did that come to my mind? <laughs> because if you listen to those songs back in the day, you was in trouble. The dog was some songs to get you in trouble. <laughs> and you don't understand that we, we get our names and we get connected to things and don't realize. And we just sing in verses because we know them, they come right back to you. Those old things that why don't the word come back to us like that? Not crushing anybody, I just want to lift you up. Let you see. So let's turn to Proverbs chapter one. We're gonna go through some scriptures, I'm gonna mix in my my, 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 my 
thing that the Lord gave me that anointing. And, and, and I'm going to speak and I'm going to go through the scriptures like that, okay? And I, I need you to just, just listen. Take notes. Take pictures. Whatever it is that you need, don't take pictures and leave them in your phone and you never view them again. I'm taking pictures, see, that they don't know I'm studying. You don't even remember the pictures you took. Come on now. We're on a journey. Everyone has to be a part of this journey. You gotta lift your own. Okay? Verse 32. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them. And here we go with, 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 with what I'm talking about. And it says, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear or harm. Then you go back up to, to the bottom part of, uh, of 32 and it says, and the complacency of fools. So when we get complacent in the things of God, what are we? You got that? I didn't call you a fool. You just called yourself if you're complacent. Okay? We don't want to be fools, do we? No. I mean, for real, do we? No. Why are you in the back won't say nothing? You want to be a fool? No. As your pastor, it is my responsibility to send an alarm to any dangers that could stop our Christian growth as individuals and as a collective body of believers that make up the church. We are the church, right? Yes. It ain't about the building, right? Yes. But if we continue to be faithful as God said we should be, we will have a building, right? Yes. You know, we're close to the mark. Now, we, we at the end of June, we're supposed to be at 150,000. We're at 140 something. After the day's off, and I don't know, you know, I, I need about six more thousand dollars to go into the offering. So if you have some extra money you want to give, let's go ahead and put in six thousand dollars today. I know you gave your offering, but this is the extra, and it's all right. You're going to still be blessed for it in the name of Jesus. Then we will be at 150. Because God said if we kept doing what we should do, we would be there. And every month we were there. April would start slowing down. People were getting hot. Wanting to buy a summer clothes. Then May really got bad. And so happened a couple of weeks, it, it picked up. We all understand, right? But we're faithful to God. God will take care of us, right? If they say, try it. Try to be faithful in your hard times. Don't do it because I said it. Take your time and get to the Lord and consult Him. Okay? So we have like 141. After the day, we'll be closer. Okay? So I just want to keep you informed. I told you I would, so I have to stick to my word. I know we don't like talking about money. And, and look, just because the church have a little money, don't mean you come and say we need the money. We have to keep it safe, okay? You can get another house, you, you understand? It's all right, because it's hard to catch up on $9,000 that you owe in back mortgage, okay? It's better to just, just consult God, okay? All right. Slide two, please. This is where we're gonna define complacency. Complacency is a state of listless resistance in what you find comfort and mediocrity. And the status quo while you indulge your own whims and feel your passion for God fade away. It, it gets like that when you start doing stuff over and over and over again and you don't see the results and you think it don't work, but then you get upset, and then you start fading away. You stop doing what you said you would do for God. It's not about the works, it's about your heart change. So let's be real. We have all experienced 
experience some sort of complacency in our spiritual journey, haven't we? Yes. I mean, all the time that we knew we should be studying or, 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 or doing something spiritual, we kind of put it aside. But say, time the football game was on. I mean, come on. We want to go to a basketball game. You know, we want to enjoy our freshly manhood, right? The women, they just stay home and study. You don't want to go to the game. <laughs> it's when complexity becomes a way of life. When it becomes, that's when it becomes a problem. It invades our areas once occupied by our passion, our interests, our desire, and our focus that we had for Christ. The shame is not complacency, but the failure to recognize and take correct measures to regain your footing in Christ. Because we can slip away. Changes make us slip away. Our feelings, when they get hurt, we slip away. But God never changes. God never hurt your feelings. People are going to hurt your feelings. It may be for a reason. Maybe your feelings are too, too, too close to the sweet. Then your feelings need to get toughened up a little bit. Because deep down, you got to know it's all about love. See, when the church said we're about love, it's going to be some challenges within the church. Because the enemy wants everybody to come after each other. Gossip. You see what she was wearing? You see what he had on? You see how they look? You do you this, you that. I didn't see them give an offering. What is that to you? And you get yourself all caught up in things that you really shouldn't be in. And then you begin to slip away because things start to happen. And God is not just going to go and correct you. You have to recognize that you're slipping away. And come back and correct yourself. Because you get a message like this and it's warning you. When you don't take heed at times. And then when it's too late, you want to cry. You know that. See, they say you don't understand, but you understand everything. Gotcha. I told them. <laughs> now, there's a difference between contentment and complacency. Slide three, please. Christian contentment means that no matter what happens, you are fully satisfied in Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Slide four. Christian complacency. It means that no matter what happens, you are fully self-satisfied with your current personal effort in pursuing Christ. You say, hey, Pastor, how do I go from I'm, I'm hitting or falling towards complacency? I'm going to read some statements here. And if you fall into that, you kind of understand where you're at, okay? I'm satisfied with who I am in Christ. See, I'm not satisfied. If you are, that's on you. I'm satisfied with the revelation I have in Christ. I'm satisfied with, you know, my worship. You know, I sit there, you know, I don't even raise my hand, but you know, but it sounds good. And I just want to throw in a little bit before I, 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 I this is on my heart. You teach at home. You have children that don't really understand worship. Teach them at home. Just don't bring them to church and, and that's it. It's a part of teaching at home as yes. well. We worship Him, yes. Yes. the Creator, the one that gave you life. Not take it for granted that you have kids and you feed them and clothe them, but you don't give them the spiritual nourishment that they need. And then they look at you and wait, wait, with your hands on, why are you doing that? And they won't say nothing because they won't know their children. You always put them in their place. 
But put them in their place. Teach them about worship. Not playing games to be quiet. When my kids were young, it wasn't no okay. games. They couldn't bring toys to church. They would make too much noise. I had one in front of me holding his hand up. Yeah, you can do it. And when I got tired of dealing with him, I got into my worship. But as the father, I had to do it. I didn't know why I was doing it, but I knew I needed to do it. And they love worship. Just can't, uh, you can't just say I'm satisfied with, 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 with you know about worship. No. Worship, man. You see these kids going around in a circle. Imagine this one of them got in there and really start worshiping God with them. Right, Hoping they're not ever really understand it's okay. But they kind of skip this and they're looking like, you know, I'm okay, I'm doing great. Yes, kid, go ahead. Yeah. 
And your face should be still on that again and again and again. You just gotta keep on digging in there with God. You can't quit. Life is a box of chocolates. And if you go in that box, you never know what you get, but you still gotta push through. You gotta believe God is with you. I don't care how many times the doctor gives you a bad report. He healed you what? He can heal you again. He can heal you again. He can heal you again. When it's over, it's over. But until it's over, you keep pushing. I want to live. I want to enjoy life. I don't have to go drinking to enjoy life. I don't have to go to Beyonce's concerts to enjoy life. I don't have to do those things. I wanted to go see Fred Hammond and the old guys, but you know it was too hot out there. So I got to pick and choose. I'm not doing it again. I did it at King's Dominion, and that was the worst concert I've ever been to. But I got spiritually satisfied when I complained the whole time. I don't want to put myself in a position to complain about something good. So you gotta understand that. Because you know, you can worship Natasha Cobb was singing, she was just sweating had a, she had a tie. I mean she was sweating so hard. And it's like I'm enjoying it, but it's just so awful out here. And that took over. Me and her, that's all we complained about. Yeah, you were there with me, baby. We'll be like Batman and Batman, you know. <laughs> yeah. So do you actually think that you grew? To the point where God is satisfied with you. And I'm going to say absolutely not. See, y'all two are the oldest in here. And y'all still can grow some more. Okay? Don't think that you know all about God, okay? Because I keep learning every day. Okay? And we keep growing. We keep feeding ourselves God's word that we can continue to grow. Amen? See, y'all keep coming to church. Y'all 80 some years old. And our other senior citizens are a little younger than y'all, but they watch us online. You know, it's convenient for them. I ain't not going to complain about you at home, okay? But see, y'all keep pressing in there. You got to the connection. That's a blessing. See, we are fortunate that you can watch at home when you need to. But it's nothing like being in a place, being connected. Seeing what's going on, because they don't even know who's here, because all they see is the front. We need to turn the camera and let them see all your beautiful faces. But they should have seen all those children leaving out. See, that's the blessing I have. I mean, woo! See, Paul gave us a warning about complacency. And if we take heed, we will recognize complacency and not fall victim to it so easily. See, that's the difference when you get information and when something comes up, you can recognize it with the information and you can make a better choice. So we're going to go to Philippians. We're going to read chapter 3. I'm going to read through 12 to 21 and I'm going to break it up in the middle of some scriptures, okay? So let's bear with me. It's all about learning. You take a piece from piece from piece and put it together and you have your whole pie, okay? I know you don't like sharing pies. That's why you take the pieces and you put them together and that's your pie. Okay, and then when the piece don't work sometimes, you take it out and you add another piece to it. Okay? See, verse 12 started when Paul said, No, not as though I had already attained. And, and that's what we all got to understand. We haven't already attained because we've been going to church for 30 years. 20 years, 10 years, 3 days. You see, some Christian people with complacency 
They have the attitude that they already attained. I know that, sir. Now I've got to listen. They already got all it is to get. I mean, how many sermons can you get out of the Bible? You've been through it for 30 years. You went to the front, to the back, to the back, to the front. You, you got it all. But see, revelation comes differently. Because sometimes you're at a place where you can receive it. Back then, you couldn't receive it because you didn't, it went over your head. But then you're there. And verse 12 is not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect or complete. This is Paul. But I have follow after. But I follow after. But I follow after. In fact, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended. See, we've been apprehended. That's why we get saved. Something came to our heart and it's pulling on us. That a change needs to take place. And then we, we, we bow down to the change. And we allow God to come into our heart. Verse 13 said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. You know, but like we knew Paul to do it all. But he's trying to tell us, I don't know it all. Even though I know a lot. I still need to learn. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now watch this. Paul says here is the thing I do. I am forgetting those things which are behind. Because how? Some, because somehow people think they look at what's behind and it causes them to be complacent. And to be satisfied. Because I read the whole Bible. People ask you, the pastor asked anybody, I read the whole Bible. I did. Yes, I did. I read from Genesis to John to Revelation. Uh, oh, yeah, Revelation to Genesis. No, Genesis to Revelation I read. What's the first scripture in John 1 1? See, don't say that. <laughs> and Paul says, you know what? I'm forgetting about the things that are behind so that I can reach forth to the things which are before me. I believe that goes together. As he says, sometimes the stuff you accomplish behind you to stop you from reaching, from reaching forth. Because the stuff behind told me that I did good then. So I'm being relaxed because of sin. But I still gotta go forward. No, this is now. Now I gotta keep going forward. Forget about behind. Forget about the people I led to Christ back then. I need to lead people now. I gotta still invite people now. I gotta still pray at home now. I gotta still believe that God will move on my prayer. Now. Now. It ain't about what I did then. If I can say, hey, look, I've been through what y'all going through. We was in the school for seven years. I seen the land. Then they cut the trees down. Then we dug a hole. Then the building stopped coming up. Then it was two men. It seemed like two men putting this church together because it took them forever. It's like two men started on this side, started on that side, hit the back, and then it's coming together. Man, if you'd have more people, it'd have poof, been together. That's how it seemed. It seemed that way. Thank you, sir. So I can't look back. What I went through, I gotta understand that I'm going forward. It's a new day. It's a new time. Okay? Yeah, I have the experience, but so what about that? I gotta get new revelation for this new thing. Alright? I don't want the old stuff. I want the new stuff. I gotta look what's gonna be ahead of us. Not what we went through and where we going. He said sometimes it's the stuff that you accomplish. Behind you to stop you from reaching to the things that are ahead of you. Right. You okay? Yes. Okay. What are some of the things in your past that you got your anchor? That got you anchored to your past when there's so much more, so much more for you yes. in the future. Don't give up, cause I made it. Keep on fighting. Don't give up, cause you're 60. 
You be tired, keep on fighting. Keep on pers persevering in God. You don't know when it's your time. What are some of the things that are behind you? It's the things that you haven't forgotten. Sometimes you gotta forget about the past. Yes, yes. The good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, all of them. All of them, all of them. Yes, when God wants you to remember it, he'll bring it to your remembrance. Okay. Don't you figure out what happened in the past. Let it go, because I'm going forward. And Paul said, I'm forgetting those things. He said, here's the one thing I'm doing. I'm forgetting. Forget it. The things that are behind me so I can reach forth into the things that are before me. There are some things before us. You have exhausted heaven. Heaven is not bankrupt. It can still answer prayers. I don't know what is in our minds at times, the thing of God is, no matter what you achieve in life, it is not all of that he wants to do what I've been through. I've seen a lady that has stage four cancer down on like 78 pounds. I mean, bone, barely can walk, come to church, bleed God for her healing to come back. The doctor said I'm cancer free. I didn't know nothing about that. That made me realize that God can do the impossible. She came back, she gave double the weight. You remember? She lived and she didn't die from cancer. The old age took her out of here. Sister Henderson. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. The only thing that can stop you from discovering all that God wants to do within you. I don't think you ever experience in this planet all that God wants us to do. I know I have missed some things, but I'm not going back to, to, to check it out. It's done. It's a new time. It's some more stuff to do. It's some people that need to be saved. Some people you know that need to be saved. It's the people I know that need to be saved. After reading verse 13, and I go here to verse 14, and it says, I press towards the mark, the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Here's how I read it. I press or else. Ain't no in between. But if I fall in complacency, I'm progressive. I'm not believing anymore. I'm saying, God, you're not able anymore. I say, oh man, I got something else to do. I need to get out of here. What time is it? I'm tired of hearing that I'm not doing well. I know I'm not doing well. Okay, that's you. Well, let's change things. You ready to change? In other words, it's like either you're going to press towards the mark of you that you're going to, or you're falling into places. Period. So Paul is encouraging people. He's encouraging us. Come on, press on. That's not it. Press on. Don't be satisfied there. Press on. Don't be complacent there. Press on. And he said, forget about that stuff behind. But I was in another church, and I tried to do that. They hurt my feelings, and I just sat down on You don't say it like that, but that's what you mean. Everything is about your feelings. Maybe they had a bad day. You couldn't pray for them uh -oh, about your sermon. They couldn't forgive them. And he said, forget about that stuff that's behind. Why do we hold on to it so much? It feels good. that somebody attack me. See, I couldn't do. I wasn't no good. And take your time to get to a place where you can allow that stuff to come out of you. You don't have to say, look, look at me now. I made it. I thought I wasn't going to be such and such. I got a house. I got a car. I got a job. I'm doing well. Why you got to do that? 
If we forget about it, we're going to make up for ourselves. And we're going to keep pressing towards God because God got something else in store for you. Okay? Well, let's just forget about that. That bad stuff that's behind us. And true enough, there's some bad things you need to forget about. And maybe God delivered you from that bad stuff. Thank you, Lord. But there's always so much more in your future that's going to require you to stay away from being complacent so you can press on. It's either it's pressing on or else. I just say that. Now press on or else. And you tell that to yourself. I'm going to press on because I don't want to be or else. I made up my mind. I have a, I have a mind to choose. God gave us a mind that you can choose. Oh, what about me? See, I don't have a job. And God said I was going to get a job. I don't know what to do. Press on. Yes. Keep applying. Yes. Well, if I apply, I can be checked out or not. Keep applying. Keep your head up. It's going to turn around for you. Amen. It will. It always does. Then you go back and remember what well, the last time. Well, yeah, God said something. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's when I go back and remember the past. And encourage myself. I can do this. And so he goes on and he says, I press towards the mark, the prize of the high calling, God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15 says, Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Be thus minded, that if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Verse 17, brother, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk. So as you have us for an example. Okay, Paul is pressing. Are we pressing? We're going to press there, right? I don't care if it's high, I'm coming to church. I don't care if it's cold, I'm coming to church. My wife said, I don't care if I'm sick, I'm coming to church. I know I'm going to be healed there. Many times she come to church sick and walked out well. You know, it, it, it's that little trick of the enemy trying to keep you whole. No, you don't keep pressing. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, verse 18, and now I'll tell you, you even weeping. He's weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh, these are the ones who became complacent. He said, they are now the enemies of the cross. Because when we get complacent, we go all the way back, and we see everybody going so far ahead, we get mad at them. And we start saying things like, they think they're better than me. No, they don't. They just don't have time to sit back like me. They're going forward. And look at the description of what they do now because they have come complacent. Verse 19, he says, whose end is destruction? Whose end is destruction? That is what happens when you are complacent. You know, I, I, I'm going to do something past that. I'm just waiting. You know, I said that at the other places. And then we hear that. I'm just waiting. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? We come to church every Sunday. You just sit there. And you complain within yourself about they won't teach you, they won't tell me what to do. That's not the passive job to tell you what to do. Everyone has a spirit. And the spirit shall lead them, not man shall lead you. But as soon as man leads you and you run into some trouble doing what he asked you to do, you're going to blame him. No, it's you need to do what God told you to do. If you don't know it, you do it anyway. Until he gets you into the right place, you know, until you hear the right thing. 
Verse 19, whose end is destruction, who God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, and whose mind earthly things. And wow, and then look at 20. It says, for our conversation, our lifestyle is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 21, it says, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto the glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You know, you were vile. I was vile before I came to the Lord. He renewed us. Act like you renewed. There's more. There's more. Hallelujah. You are either listen to me now. Or you're growing in maturity. Or you're growing into some degree of complacency. But there's no such thing as I'm just standing still right now. You're not standing still. See, you're either growing one way or the other. You're growing the other way, but you're not just standing still. You're either growing towards the things of God or growing to an immaturity in the things of God. Or what's the other word I talked about? Or you're growing closer to complacency. Let's look at Second Peter and I'm closing up. I thought this was the very well, was very interesting. Second Peter chapter one. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. Verse five through ten. I'll read. He says, in, a view, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patience and endurance and patience and endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Yes. Notice he's adding, and he's adding, and he's adding. You gotta love our brothers, you gotta love our sisters. And I always say no matter what. He's grown, hallelujah. He keeps adding to it. He keeps growing in the things of God. This stuff here, it, it blows you up and matures you and things of God, but you have to try it. You can't keep yourself lost in your problems and your hurt and your pain. You gotta give God an opportunity to heal you from that. That way you can continue to grow. Verse 8 says, no more grow. Hold it. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you'll be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but those who fail to develop in the way, those who have become complacent, those who fail to develop in this way, those who fail to press and to keep growing, but those who fail to develop this way. Verse 9, second half, is that they are short-sighted. They are blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their own sins. Verse 10, so dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you're really among those God has called and chosen. When people see us, they gotta see God. They gotta see, they gotta hear. But when they hear, they gotta see. They just can't hear, and then you do other things like them. I say if you do other things like them, don't talk about him. Because you're showing a bad face. You're making it harder each time for them to come to church to change their life. I know you're struggling, but you got to know you're struggling. If you got to indulge in the things they indulge in, then what's the use of going to church? What's the use of proclaiming he's my father? The sinner man don't understand that you're still working through some things. He only see what he see. You know how you work. Then you say, well, you know, we all got sins. 
That's what the pastor always say. We all sin and fall short. No excuse. Repent and you ain't sin. But the sinner man doesn't understand that. And, and, and I keep saying, do these things. And I know you're saying, what age should I do, Pastor? Keep growing, keep pressing. Yes. Don't become complacent. Yes. Those who do these things, you will never fall away. Those who stay in the realm of God will never fall away. That's what the word of the Lord says. Is that something a phrase we say so, hey, you don't keep doing it? No. I want you to know who God is. I want you to know God for yourself. I want you to know his power, his authority. And he's given it to all of us. When you can speak to things and it's your move. Do you have that power? Well, act like it. Act like it. I don't want you to sit here and just be staring at me like I'm a crazy man. Telling you in the name of Jesus, you have to have your mind made up. You got to know no matter what, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do the things of God. I'm going to keep pressing. I don't care about my sister, my brother, my wife, my husband, my children. I have to press. 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 And you gotta know that you gotta press. You gotta know it. You gotta press. That's how you grow. If you keep falling through these things that hurt your feelings, you're not growing anywhere. You've been in Christ for 20 years and you keep crying about what somebody did. Forgive them and keep pressing toward the rock of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Don't say someone hindered you. Because God's going to say who hindered you from doing what it is that I called you to do. Yeah. Who? My husband wanted me to stay home with him. What does that have to do with me? I'm above your husband, I gave you life. You remember when I healed you and you said you would serve me for the rest of your life? Now you said your husband? That don't make sense to God. And that's why I said we're going to really examine ourselves. Are we just doing the motion? Or are we doing because our heart, we desire to please God? Even if I sweep up the floor, I'm doing it unto my God. Even if I put some chairs straight, I'm doing it unto my God. Even if some trash picked up, my man over here sees the coffee waste on the floor. He looked around, what he wanted was a napkin. I gave him a napkin. See, we all was doing something that helped the mess. It was a mess. We had to clean it up. The girl don't even know she dropped the coffee, the minister over here. It was all good. I had to tell him because we leave mess and we don't even realize we leave mess at times. And you have somebody that's cleaning up. Only reason I said that because it go with the message. I wouldn't have wanted to blast, you know what I mean? But sometimes you gotta understand that some people clean up our mess and we don't even know. Because see, she was doing a good thing for the Lord. And we took care of her. It's all good. See, God said he would take care of you. It's good, ain't it? It's all good. It's all good. God is good. God is good. So we are good. Because we have God. Man, is anybody here that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the one I've been speaking about for the last 45 minutes, I, I, I want you to think about this. 
Could I try him out? Could I try him out for a minute? He might really heal my heart. My hurt heart. I'm tired of hurt. I'm tired of going through all the time. I need some help. Is there anybody here that's like that? Or just need prayer? When two or more gathered together and you're coming collectively, you're asking God to do something for you. Like-minded people come together. Your spirits connect with God and things take place. So is anybody here today that needs prayer? Okay, whatever it is you're going through, we come here to help to resolve the issues of life through God. The one who's able and capable of doing all things. But we have to give him an opportunity to move in our life. I'm tired of carrying the baggages. Are you tired? They get a little heavy after a while. I get emotionally distressed at night when everything's quiet. And I'm tossing a turn and I can't get the breakthrough that I'm looking for. I need God to break through for me. Is that you out there? you to recognize where you are. It's all right if I need a little help, a little strength. If I'm praying for my brother and sister and I want somebody to be in agreement with me, that we can come together. Because I want my brother saved. I need my mom saved. I need my uncle saved. And I need somebody in agreement with me. If you're all good, y'all good, everybody good. Don't play good. We're tired of that. It's trying to move forward. Come get what you need and keep moving. Don't think it's all good. I don't, want somebody, I don't care what somebody knows. Nobody don't know, but God knows. God knows. God knows.